In this video, we'll use the MPFS GPIO interrupt project to demonstrate interrupts. You can download a copy of the GPIO interrupt project from the Polar Fire SOC bare metal library. This project demonstrates interrupts by initializing the PLIC using the PLIC init function and then enabling interrupts on the system using the enable IRQ function. Then it'll configure UART for message sending and configure system timer interrupts using the sysTick config function. Then it'll configure the GPIO interrupt fabric control register by writing a value of all Fs into the register. This routes all GPIO2 interrupts to the PLIC. It will then set the PLIC interrupt priority threshold to zero and iterate through the individual GPIO interrupts, setting their priority to a value of two. Then GPIO2 is initialized and some of the GPIOs are configured in output mode. Then GPIOs being used as interrupts are configured. GPIO 30 and 31 are configured with an active high trigger level. Then the interrupts are enabled on the GPIOs. It will also configure the Fabric to MSS interrupt with a priority of two. Then we will enter a while loop where we can enter values on UART to set GPIOs 26, 27 or 28 to cause an interrupt to the MSS. Down towards the bottom, we've interrupt handlers for GPIO to bit 30 and bit 31, along with the handler for the fabric to MSS interrupt. And then finally, at the very end, we've a system timer interrupt handler for this heart. So let's start up a debug session and try this project out. Once your debug session starts up and you reach the breakpoint at the E51 main, you can just resume the project to let it run. You should also open a terminal, and in my case it's connected to COM10 for UART0 to send and receive messages. If you reach a breakpoint on the U54 underscore 1 main, you can just resume the program, as we're not going to use this heart, and it's just going to go back into wait for interrupt mode. If you return to the e51.c file, this while loop here is currently being executed. If we enter a value of 1 on UART, we're going to generate an interrupt on GPIO2 pin 30. So let's try that out now. Set a breakpoint on line 164, which is the line of code that will be executed when you enter a 1 on UART. If we enter 1 now, we'll reach the breakpoint that we set. And now the MSS is going to set GPIO 2 bit 26 to a value of 1. If we return to the reference design, we can see that the OR gate here is being driven by switch 2 and GPIO 2 bit 26. So this means if we set GPIO 2 bit 26, the output of the OR gate will assert to GPIO 2 bit 30 as an input. Now let's set a breakpoint in our GPIO2 bit 30 interrupt handler and resume the program. Now we've reached the breakpoint in the GPIO2 bit 30 interrupt handler and if we resume the program again, we'll get a UART print to let us know the interrupt has occurred. Now let's try out one of the fabric to MSS interrupts and we can cause this by entering a 3 on the terminal. So let's set a breakpoint in the fabric to MSS interrupt handler. The fabric to MSS interrupt is driven by the OR gate here, which can be set by setting GPIO2 bit 28. If we enter a value of 3 on the terminal, we'll set MSS GPIO2 bit 28 so now let's run the program and see the interrupt occur. And now we've reached the fabric to MSS interrupt handler. So we can unset our breakpoint here 
And if we return to the terminal and resume the program, we can see a message to let us know that the interrupt has occurred. There's one interrupt occurring that we can't actually see at the moment, and that is the system timer interrupt. This interrupt is generated from a timer in the MSS and occurs periodically to give you a stable interrupt source. So if we set a breakpoint on line 216, we can see that without setting any GPIO bits, we keep entering this interrupt handler at a set period. 